Bohdan Nahailo is the chief editor of Kiev Post, and he joins us now live from Barcelona. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us here on the program today. Uh, now, Russian and Ukrainian officials are supposed to be holding uh, a meeting at this very moment, uh, but there is little hope that they could reach some sort of uh, an agreement. Can we at least expect um, some sort of a ceasefire uh, to be resulted following this meeting? Nobody seriously expects a ceasefire because all the messages from Putin and Moscow is that they want victory. They want Ukraine to capitulate. They've made it very clear that the terms that they are demanding is that Ukrainians lay down their arms and basically accept uh, ru Russian rule over them. So this is a, a kind of cosmetic exercise. Uh, Zelensky needs to be seen as reaching out and uh, asking for a ceasefire, calling for peace. But obviously, he's not going to go there or send his people there to offer uh, Ukraine's capitulation. Likewise, the Russians are not going to pull back now that they are in the outskirts of Kyiv, have taken several uh, Ukrainian cities in the south and have committed themselves uh, so deeply in, in this uh, inhuman uh, war crime. Uh, President Zelensky called on Russian soldiers to drop their weapons to save their own lives. Just walk us through how the Ukrainian military is making its advance on Russian soldiers and why their movements are unprecedented for Russians. Well, you see, the Ukrainians are fighting to defend their land. They're motivated. They are uh, consist. The defense forces now, as you've shown, consist not only of regular soldiers, but of mobilized veterans, of raw recruits, women. Uh, prepared to throw Molotov cocktails uh, or form human shields to protect their uh, villages and towns. S whereas the uh, Russian soldiers, apart from the Spetsnaz, the commandos, the highly trained ones, uh, are also uh, young men, by and large, uh, demoralized, underfed, tired, not knowing what they're doing there, not knowing why they are fighting the Ukrainians. Uh, you know, no reason has been given, apart from Putin making a statement that uh, Ukrainians are um, Nazis and uh, that they need to be put in their place, meaning uh, they should be brought under Russia's control. So there is a difference also in psychology. Plus, I think the Russians didn't expect that the Ukrainians, having received arms from the West, and thank you, Turkey, for, for the drones that have been so useful, these uh, Stinger um, missiles and uh, the javelins that have come in recent weeks, they have made a difference. They have destroyed a lot of uh, Russian uh, tanks, uh, uh, hardware, and, and planes have also been shot down. So despite the numerical superiority and the equipment, uh, uh, the superior military equipment, particularly the rockets that, uh, the, that Russia is using, the Ukrainians on the ground are fighting very fiercely and have shown that they will resist. So even right. if there is a Russian military victory temporarily, the resistance will go on. And in the longer term, Russia cannot win this war. Right. Um and I want to talk a bit about media coverage and how journalists have been describing the situation in Ukraine as unexpected because it's a European country. But looking at Ukraine's history with Russia, it was only back in 2014 where they annexed Crimea and the rhetoric uh, that this shouldn't be happening to Ukrainians because they're civilized people comparing them to the people in the Middle East is um, quite racist, to be honest. No one should be put in this position, frankly. What's your take on that? I fully agree. And uh, the point is, we have seen uh, Russian action in the Middle East, uh, uh, barbaric methods used there. And I think uh, in Ukraine, um, we, uh, we respect uh, all peoples, including uh, our neighbors uh, who are democratically minded. And I must say that the owner of our newspaper, the Kiev Post, is a Syrian a refugee who's been in Ukraine for 26 years and who finances uh, our newspaper because he believes in freedom, in democracy, and sets a really good example for the rest of Ukraine and, and Europe. All right. Uh, Bohdan Nahailo, he's the editor, uh, chief editor, rather, of Kiev Post. Thank you for joining us here on Tier 2 World and sharing